Today we will talk about modified gravity. This is a sequel to my earlier video about dark matter. In the earlier video I explained why physicists believe that our universe contains dark matter, but that some observations are difficult to explain with it. In this video I will explain how modified gravity explains the observations. Let us have another look at the galaxies and at the disk galaxies in particular. In the disk galaxies most of the mass is in the center of the galaxy. This means if you want to calculate how a star moves far away from the center, it's a good approximation to only ask what is the gravitational pull that comes from the center bulge of the galaxy. Einstein taught us that gravity is really due to the curvature of space and time. But in many cases it is still quantitatively accurate to describe gravity as a force. This is known as the Newtonian limit and it's a good approximation so long as the pull of gravity is weak and objects move much slower than the speed of light. It's a bad approximation for example close by the horizon of a black hole, but it's a good approximation for the dynamics of galaxies that we are looking at here. It is then not difficult to calculate the stable orbit of a star far away from the center of a disk galaxy. For the star to remain on its orbit, the gravitational pull must be balanced by the centrifugal force. You can solve this equation for the velocity of the star and this will give you the velocity that is necessary for the star to remain on a stable orbit. As you can see the velocity drops inversely with the square root of the distance to the center. If you draw this relation on a graph, it looks like this. But this is not what we observe. What we observe instead is that the velocities continue to increase with the distance from the galactic center and then they become constant. This is known as a flat rotation curve. This is not only the case for our own galaxy, but it's the case for hundreds of galaxies that have been observed. The curves don't always become perfectly constant, sometimes they have wiggles, but it's abundantly clear that these observations cannot be explained by the normal gravitational pull caused by the normal matter only. Dark matter solves this problem by postulating that there is additional mass in the galaxies distributed in a spherical halo. This has the effect of speeding up the stars because the gravitational pull is now stronger due to the mass from the dark matter halo. There is always a distribution of dark matter that will reproduce whatever velocity curve you observe. In contrast to this, modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND for short, postulates that gravity works differently. In MOND the gravitational potential is the logarithm of the distance and not as normally the inverse of the distance. In MOND the gravitational force is then the derivative of the potential, so that's the inverse of the distance, while normally it is the inverse of the square of the distance. If you plug this modified gravitational force into the force balance equation as before, you will see that the dependence on the distance cancels out and the velocities just become constant. Now of course you cannot just go and throw out the normal 1 over r square gravitational force law because we know that it works on our planet and it works in the solar system. So Mon postulate that the normal 1 over r square law crosses over into a 1 over r law. This crossover happens not at a certain distance but it happens at a certain acceleration. The new force law comes into play at low acceleration. This acceleration where the crossover happens is a free parameter in MOND and it's normally denoted A with an index 0 or A0. You can determine the value of this parameter by just trying out which fits the data best. It turns out that the best fit value is closely related to the cosmological constant. Why that is so, no one has any idea. The cosmological constant is a specific type of dark energy but there is no known relation between dark energy and dark matter. You can also use the above relation to find out what is the relation between the velocity of the far out stars and the mass of the galaxy. 
It turns out that the mass of the galaxy scales with the fourth power of the velocity. This is known as the Tully-Fisher relation and it is very well confirmed by observations. Modified gravity predicts it. Dark matter cannot predict it. If you allow yourself to distribute dark matter in galaxies however you want, then you can of course also get the Tully-Fisher relation by just choosing whatever distribution it is that works. If you however try to predict the distribution of dark matter by using computer simulations for structure formation, then you will find that it is difficult to recover what we actually observe. If you want to recover what we observe with dark matter, you will have to introduce a lot of new parameters. So you can make it work, but not in any simple way. Mond, however, explains the observations in a very simple way. However, we already know that Mond is wrong. Mond does not work well for the galaxy clusters and it does not work well for the early universe. This should not surprise you because, as I told you the last time, Mond is only an approximation that works in some cases, just like the Newtonian limit is only an approximation that works in some cases. Of course, you would rather want to have a full theory to replace Einstein's theory of general relativity, from which you can then derive Mond in a certain approximation. This full theory is referred to as modified gravity, and we presently don't know what this theory looks like. We have a few approaches, but personally I don't find any of them too convincing. But the next time I want to tell you what I think is presently the most convincing explanation for our observations.